This is Julie Waldorf, juliewaldorf.com. And I have Clint here. Clint, 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 Clint. Could you tell me? Yes. What's the most recent God thing that's happened to you lately? Recent God thing? Yeah. There's a lot of God things that are going on these days. At least that's what I've been seeing and hearing and witnessing. Well, so what's your most recent God thing? But I, I don't know. There's so, you're right. There's so many God events. But it's just like on what scale? Well, whatever scale you want. You can say it's money or uh, health or you can say it's children or I think you can say it's education. You can say whatever little God thing that's happened. Well, in reference to whatever go, what's going you know, on. I, I like the, I, I like it when people give credit to God, you know, for saving their little boy from cancer or getting through a surgery or just, you know, getting their head straight, right? Uh-huh. But I, I have to say that the God events that impress me the most are the ones that are personal and, I don't know, much smaller. You know, like... Um, so, and this is from, this is personal. I guess I can share this. Um, but I was thinking to this, the world. To the world, right? <laughs> I seen this morning that so many of us are involved in our own stories. And I was I've had a couple conversations with people the last few days, and I noticed that when I was talking to them, the way I was talking to them was like, it's my story, and anything you say is going to fit into my story. Okay. You know, and, yeah. and a lot of us are like that. And so I was just kind of in a meditation, kind of contemplation place this morning. And I saw that, you know, I don't, that's not the best way to be. We need to be helping other people with their stories. And not so much trying to drag everybody in our stories and how they fit into our stories. And it's when we, when we see how we fit into their stories, and because I, I realize it's like my story is, is the most important thing to me. I'm, I'm not saying the most thing, but you know when I'm talking and thinking and when I'm going out in life, it's my story. Well, how does that fit into my story? And if I make other people's stories more important, more paramount, then God's involved in that because that's about us really becoming community. And, and even if we might have a better vision, it's not even just trying to impress that better vision on that person. It's trying to really integrate and not, you know, that's why I talked about you earlier and we didn't, you know, you did, of course it's not on the video, but we talked about the right kind of humility. There's this humility that's subservient and wrong, obviously. Then there's this other kind of humility that's kind of cool, but yet it doesn't really get us anywhere. You're like, man, I, 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 I was the better person in this and everything. But then there's that, there's that, uh, that humility that is more adaptive. And it's that humility that's adaptive to other people and our environment and, and, and things work. That's why things will work. Uh, you know, things can work for a lot of different reasons, bad and good. But I think the best way for things to work is when you have that adaptive humility and when you realize that your story may not be the most important story out there right now. Well, and usually it isn't. You know, usually when you go into other people's environments and things are going on, um, most of the time, you know, everybody comes together because it is a God thing for one week, for one reason or another. And um, to it, learn, to learn and to grow. It does, but see, here's the to thing. Adapt, it does, but to see. Communicate. But we're not, you know, there's a lot of talk in, ch in churches about giving God the glory. And if you go into the actual origins of words like glory into the New Testament and the, and the Jewish texts, that glory has nothing to do with singing a little ditty about God and how great he is, like some Barney song. It has a lot more to do with saying, that's, you know, that's of really connecting and seeing, you know, that's God. And really just affirming, it's not you, it's not about you, it's not even about them. It is about love and that preeminent personal force of love that is in that situation bringing it out and saying, you know, well, let's, let's nurture this, let's cultivate this, and let's put our egos aside. And that's very difficult for people to do, anybody to do. Mother Teresa talked about it too. She's like, it was very hard for her to do. I'm like, really? That would seem to be like it would be really easy for somebody like that. But no, it's, it's not part, naturally part of human nature. Um, and so we kind of have to go against the grain in order to, I think, to be God-affirming and to be love-affirming. 
there's a natural part of that, yeah, because there's a spark of God's image in us, but there's a part that's kind of right, and that's the part where we need to kind of have that adaptive humility. All right, well, I'm going to have to look up adaptive humility. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway, thanks, Clint. Sure. Julia Waldorf, Julia Waldorf.com. Awesome. Ciao, ciao.